And be glad in it. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I keep turning the wrong button on for the audio. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But this is the day that Yah's made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Isn't Yah good? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's very good. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure everybody can hear us. Can you all hear us okay? <laughs> You're saying no sound. Um, <clears throat> maybe that was when the second time you... Um, let me see. Am I doing this right? Yep. This one here? It's on. So. Okay. Let us know when you can hear us, family. Okay. Yes, they can. Let's let's get to it. Hallelujah. 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 Yah's good. Hallelujah. This is the day that Yah has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad yeah, in this day. Hallelujah. Yes. Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. He's always a wonderful Elohim. The way that wind was blowing through <clears throat> yesterday, mm -hmm. and Yah is just wonderful. He's merciful, and yes, he, he is. He blessed us all, and I just want to thank him for it. You oh, know, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only a couple of minor things blown over. You know, one thing wasn't too minor, but it wasn't that bad. It's, it's just it's, big, but it's, it's just <laughs> big, but it's minor. Yeah, we can. It can be put back in place. Yeah, so it's no big I deal. Yeah. Didn't get towed up, so thank right. you, Yah, for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> it just got knocked mean. over, but it gave us a whole other goal too. So it all sure things did. work together. All for things good. work for the good. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Hallelujah. So he is good. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, wonderful in everything that he do. That's why I believe when the scripture says and everything give thanks. Mm -hmm. Give him thanks in everything, everything because he's gonna work it for your good. That's right. And you sit there and say, How could something like that be for my good? Mm -hmm. Well, it made us determine something, didn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. Instead it, of having it sitting up so high, we decided the wheels, we're going to get them wheels off from yeah, under so it could sit lower. So it could sit lower. So it's, it worked out, right? Yeah, that made that. Had it stayed yeah. up, we never would have lowered it, right? That's right. So y'all said, let me just knock this thing over. So off I can on. tell y'all how I want this thing done. <laughs> I don't want it sitting that high. I want y'all to keep it low. Keep it low. <laughs> so there you go. Exactly, exactly. And what's interesting is we just talked to someone about something else the other day, and they told us, had nothing to do with this truck right here. They told us how to get the wheels out from under a truck. Remember that? Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> so yeah, we, we we even have that bit of information. But um, anyway, all things work together for good, family. That's right, for good. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's lesson <laughs> is titled "The Judas Goat and Steer: mm -hmm. The Pattern of Betrayal." Yes. I want you to understand something. There's a pattern of betrayal. <clears throat> And once you see this pattern, you can see how these people, when they betray somebody, they have these steps that they go through. Mm -hmm. And these steps are pretty sinister. Mm -hmm. But I want you to see these steps and what they do when they come around to betraying somebody. So I want you to think about this Judas goat, okay? <clears throat> the Judas goat. The Judas goat is a goat that is trained... Um, used in, go in general animals herding, pretty much. I'm reading this here. Mm -hmm. He's trained in general animal herding. Mm -hmm. The Judas goat is trained to associate with sheep or cattle, leading them, leading them to a specific destination. In, in stockyards, a Judas goat will lead sheep to the slaughter mm -hmm. while its own life is spared. Mm. Judas goats are also used to lead other animals to specific pens and onto trucks mm -hmm. to be delivered also to probably be slaughtered. <laughs> right, yes. So this Judas goat, I got a video I'm going to show you in a minute. But this Judas goat, what he does is <clears throat> he appears to be very friendly with the flock. Yes. But indeed, he is actually very dangerous. Hmm. So I want you to look at this image I'm going to show you here. That's what he does. Interesting, he, huh? He cozies up to it like. Yeah, he calls yeah. up to the lamb. And they look at him like best friends, right? <laughs> that lamb just don't know that Judas trying to get you cooked, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's trying to get you slaughtered. Cozying up to you. <laughs> yeah, he's going to cozy up to you, right? I want to say this uh, real mm -hmm. quick about that Judas goat. Yeah. He or she mm -hmm. is a trained deceiver. Wow. Someone or a, a, a being that is being used or trained to deceive you so they are not real mm. now watch this mm. watch this right so in the spiritual case the trainer of the judas goat is the devil that's right mm, mm, mm. Mm. are you hearing me 
Okay, so now I want you to see this video of the Judas goat. Let's play that for you real quickly here. What is it? A Judas goat. He's like, come on, my one? little friends. No, come on, my little, little lovely. Yeah, he's leading the sheep right to the slaughterhouse. Come on. Remember me? We were cozied up and See, playing when they the get field to the, the other day. He ducks to one side come and on. the silly sheep go in to get their throats All cut. Is well. He ducks out at the last minute. Do you see that? The Judas goat ducked out at the last minute. They open the door and he ducks out and the other ones, they just keep they on just going down the hall. Mm, mm, mm. to be slaughtered mm, okay mm, mm. now there's another mm, one i want to talk to you about here it's a, it's a judas steer Does anyone know what a steer is anyone y'all know what a steer is know what a steer is a steer is a um it's a it's a bull a cow a bull okay now i want to describe this steer to you i'm gonna read what they got here right judas steer okay Part of a cowboy's job during the drive was to identify the Judas steer. So he has to look and see which one of these male bulls will make a perfect Judas steer. Okay. Once at the end of the trail, the Judas could simply lead the other cattle to the slaughter mm. with no hassle. If a particularly good Judas was found, he was spared of the meat hook and used again. Mm. Mm, mm, a Judas steer. Now, I want you to take a look at this Judas steer here and look at the comparison of the bull and the steer. Can you see the difference? What's, what's going on with this Judas steer? Why does he look like that? Look at the bull. Bull look like he'll run you down, right? The steer, look, steer looks like... Hi, how are you? Let's be friends. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look intimidating, do I? Isn't that something? He doesn't look intimidating. Look at him. Doesn't, right. <laughs> so now, watch this, right? I'm going to show you something. A steer is a male bull belonging to the family of cattle. It is normally a bull. Listen. It's normally a bull. But if it gets castrated, it becomes a steer. Mm-hmm. The term is also used to describe a young neutered male primarily raised for beef. Now, watch this, right? You heard of the, stern, the term steers and queers? Mm. Hmm. Now, you know what a steer is. What's a queer? Huh? We know what that is, too. You know what that is, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what's going on is this steer here in this image here has no fight in him. He is willing to lead the whole flock to the slaughter. Someone said that the steer looks deceptive. Isn't that something? You know, he looks de deceptive. Yeah, he like, does. Like, hey, um, hi. Isn't that something? Looks like he's friendly, too. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you know, he looks kind of friendly, but... Isn't that something? Can't be trusted. Now, watch this, right? So, he's willing to lead the whole flock to the slaughter. Mm. You see, in the churches today, these preachers you see... They are Judas Steers. Mm, mm, mm. This is why they allow so many queers in the church directing the choirs. Mm, mm, because they're mm. Judas Steers. Mm. Are you hearing me? They got no, they here they are sympathizing with the queers, right? The Steers sympathizing, sympathizing with the, the queers. queers. Mm. Are you hearing this, right? Mm, mm, this is mm. what's going on in the assemblies. They have no backbone to stand up against sin. Now look at this bull, for instance, right? You flag the color red in front of his face and he gonna go crazy trying to get that red is like sin to a bull. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That red is like sin to that bull. He gonna charge it and stomp it down, right? Mm -hmm. But the steer, he got no fight in him. And he might even want to put it on like a skirt. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Can you tie a bow around my neck? Wow. <laughs> you know, with that red. Wow. Are you hearing this, right? Mm -hmm. So now I want you to understand what's going on, right? And what you see going on out here in ministry, 
what you see going on. This is why you got so many people that's jelly back. They got they got no backbone to stand as it relates to sin. You got all the scripture telling you that homosexuality is wrong, and you got all these people, so-called ministers, these steer ministers, preaching that ain't nothing wrong with them. Right? Well, watch this, right? Watch this, right? So. Let me put this into perspective for you, right? And think about what I'm about to tell you, right? So then you got a man that's a murderer, right? He's a killing dog, straight up murderer, right? And he done killed, then went to jail for killing, and they came out and ain't got it out of his system. Still got this, this murdering thing going on, right? And you see him and you say, oh, that brother can be saved. Well, come on up in the church, brother. Right? Come on up in the church. He can be saved. He got swastikas all on him. You know, could have been the same kid that went up in the one church and then shot all those folk in that one church. Right? And he, he, he come on, brother. Come on up in here. We want to bless you. Right? Now, you look at me and say, oh, no, no, that's crazy. Leave him out there. Well, sin is sin. Mm -hmm. So what's with the queers? You going to leave them? You going you gonna to let them come in, though, but push him out. They are just as dangerous as a murderer sitting in the assembly. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Just as dangerous. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. See, I told you I was going to bring it up into pers pers perspective for you, right? Because I need you to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. You need to understand seeing is seeing. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't have a stone out murderer, ain't got it out of the system, still got a gun on the radio, come up in the church and kill, but you let these queers come up in the assemblies mm -hmm. and direct the choirs. Wow. Uh, if they gonna come up in there, they need to be getting seeking deliverance. Exactly. Not trying to recruit. Not trying to recruit, right. So they supposed to be seeking deliverance. In other words, he ain't coming under the murder ain't coming under with a gun on him. He done served his time. He done rent the rehabilitation. And he's like, look here, I don't want to be like that no more. This is it for me. I'm not gonna walk the walk. I'm not gonna talk the talk. You sit down talking to him, he talking about talking about talking about blowing somebody's brain out. You sit down to the dinner, yeah, man, you know, uh, how you how you like the um the, the 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 baked chicken. Oh yeah, baked chicken is good, but it's good. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I was just thinking about shooting somebody. Oh, <laughs> you really do? Who are you talking about the baked chicken here? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I know the baked I chicken know, is you good. Know you know what I mean? Is. But how did that baked chicken get to be baked? Somebody had to kill it, right? <laughs> and you sit there like this dude is out his mind. Like, can't you get that killing out your mind, right? You get what I'm trying to say here? If they ain't got it out of their system, why are they around you? Mm-hmm. And so let me bring some things into perspective, too. We're going to be talking about the pattern of betrayal. So we're obviously not saying that, uh, that the Judas goat is only uh, used by right. leaders or speakers or preachers or exactly. teachers or evangelists or missionaries. We're not just saying that. But the Judas goat or the Judas steer... If you bring it into a, a biblical perspective, or even if you bring it into today's perspective, dealing with people, period, that Judas goat spirit or that Judas steer spirit can take hold of anybody who is not truly of the most high. Right. Because that pattern of betrayal comes with the spirit of deception. That's, That's right. That's one of the things that I want you all to understand about the Judas anything, whether it's a Judas goat, the Judas steer or the biblical Judas, there was some deception there. Remember, he leaned in to kiss Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. That yes. kiss was to say, oh, we're brothers. You mm -hmm. can trust me. But he didn't realize you're dealing with Hamashiach. He knows your thoughts are he far knew. off. Yes. He knew that your thoughts didn't mean that kiss. That was the kiss of betrayal, right? And so we're going to be talking about that pattern of betrayal today, that people who smile in your face... <clears throat> can be the biggest enemy. Yes. And that's the discernment, that's the spirit of discernment that we need to ask the Most High for. Uh, Father, let us know if that smiling face is one that's really truly telling lies. Mm -hmm. Let us know, Father, if that, yes. uh, that handshake is something that we need to be aware of. You know how that song says, beware of the handshake because it hides a snake? Mm, this is mm, what we mm. need to pray for. Father, yes. 
help us to understand and to discern people because there is a pattern of betrayal. Yes. But one thing I want to say, I want to put this on top before we, <clears throat> as a cherry on top, before we get into this message, what happened to Judas? See, if you let that spirit of betrayal take yep. hold of you, you're going to meet the same end as Judas. So you might be getting away with something for the moment. Yeah. For the moment. But the joys of sin only last the season. It's coming for you. Judgment is that coming. season yeah. worthwhile? Mm, mm, Remember mm. what happened to Judas. Uh -huh. Judas met his end because that spirit of betrayal um, activated judgment against him. And so it hunted him down yep. until he was destroyed. Until he was destroyed, yep. So now we're going to get into these patterns of betrayal, okay? The first thing in the pattern of, of betrayal is a close relationship, okay? Uh, deceiver got to get close to you, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, all betrayals, the, the <clears throat> person behind it all is the devil. He's behind that thing, you know? Mm hmm most time he is, even if it ain't even dealing with a saved person. He likes to keep that kind of uh, thing going. You know what I'm saying? So he wants to, he got to have a close relationship. So in order to betray somebody, you got to be close to him. Mm -hmm. You can't betray nobody that you ain't close to, right? You're going to stab somebody in the back. They got to be close to you, right? That's right. Backstab is because he right up on your back, right? Mm -hmm. You ain't going to let an enemy get up on your back, right? You see an enemy, you know, no, no, dude, you stay, you over, stay there. over there. You stay over there. But a friend, you let him get right up on you. Mm -hmm. He get right all close to you. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, brother. As soon as you turn your back, bam. You know, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. how it is, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention to what we're saying, all right? So you got to get close to you, right? Once he gets close to you, something happens. He begin to see what Yah is doing in a person's life, and then he gets jealous. Mm -hmm. And then he gets offended by some of the words you may say, right? He gets the men, he gets mm -hmm. uh, offended, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing happened, honor is diminishing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean, right? Pay attention. So, Judas, how, many, how long did he spend with the Messiah mm -hmm. before he betrayed him? A long time. Three years. Mm -hmm. So you mean tell me you were close to the Messiah for three years, right? You were close to him and whatever. So what happened? Mm -hmm. You got around the Messiah and after a while, you've been around for so long until you finally said, he ain't all that. <laughs> Mm, Let mm, them mm. spirits start talking to you. Spirits start talking. Look at it. Here the blessed man of Yahuwah. Mm, mm, His mm. son himself is right there. But you looking him up and down. Listening to what the Pharisees and Sadducees got to say. And you sitting there. You say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to make some money off of him. He ain't all that. I know he, you know, people claiming he's the Messiah and all this. But he just a carpenter. He ain't all that. He's just a carpenter, son. He ain't all that. Mm. And so first thing they want to do, they say, okay, I, you know what? I'm going to have to end this. I'm going to have to come up again. So now the spirit of betrayal that took over his mind. I want, wanted to um, bring out mm. a point that Hannah um, put here. It says, reminds me of how someone will dislike you and then pull someone else into the same hatred towards you. Yes. In other words, that Judas goat is such a betrayer that they don't want to be the only one who dislike you. They want to pull somebody else mm -hmm. in on it. You know what I'm saying? They yes. Want, they want to pull somebody else's strings. Yes. Let me whisper something in your ear about this person over there. Yes. And they will imply something that is not necessarily even true. That's right. That's why years ago I said an implication is just as bad as an accusation, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have we're gonna really have to get into that one yeah. day. Uh, yeah, you we know, are. a whole message getting into the fact that an implication can be just as bad as an accusation. It's an accusation, that's meaning right. a person can imply something about you and send a whole other thought storm your way. A whole mm -hmm. other thought storm your way. Mm -hmm. Something like, um, "Hey, I will I will watch my purse." When he's around. When he's around, watch yeah, your purse. Watch your stuff. The person, what are you trying hey, to say uh, Make sure you lock your car door mm -hmm. when, when he around. Mm -hmm. And um, so he ain't told you nothing. Yeah. He just said lock your door, right? Mm -hmm. And so that sends your mind into yes. a frenzy. Lock my door. Now, why would he say lock my... Now, he didn't say that the person ever stole anything. He never said that the person tried to steal his car. 
He never said that the person tried to plant a bomb in the car. He never said any of that, right? Yes. But he implied that you better watch your mm -hmm. car or you better hide your purse or yes. you better do this or that when that person is around. Mm, mm, mm. So that implication, that implication becomes just as bad as an accusation. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and so is. that Judas goat sets the stage too. He set the stage. The Judas goat or the Judas steer is a deceiver. Yep. Trying to deceive you into thinking a certain way, acting a certain way, yep. moving a certain way. Yeah, that's funny. The next one is they commit acts of deception. Oh, okay. And that's something. Yes. The last one is they have a coldness about them. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a real coldness about them. Now, bait now now on those six that we named, we're gonna go through the scriptures now. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna point out some of those things that you see in the in the scriptures. So now let me ask you the, the question. What was the first betrayal in the scriptures? The first one. Anybody tell me? Any guesses Can on there? Can we take it back to the garden? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Yes. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Yes, there you go. Cain and Abel. I was trying to see if we can take it back further than that, but um, because the, guess you the, can. the um, serpent deceived um, Eve, well, she, but was that really a betrayal? No, the betrayal would mm -hmm. be in heaven. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. when Satan actually... Yes. Came against the Most High. Here mm -hmm. he was, the Most High's right yes. hand angel, yes. and he there betrayed him. And mm -hmm. you yes. know, so yeah, the first would actually be in heaven. Yeah, right. He's already an enemy. Huh? I said, so now he's already an enemy. Yeah, he came That's down right. as an enemy. That's yes. right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the Cain and Abel story. That's on um, Genesis chapter four, and let's read verse one through fifteen. <clears throat> Genesis chapter four. <clears throat> Verses 1 through 15. Genesis chapter 4. Verses 1 through 15 reads as follows. It says, And Adam knew Chua, his woman, and she conceived and bore Cain, mm -hmm, Cain, and said, I have begotten a man from Yahuwah. And she again bore his brother Havel. Abel. Mm -hmm. And Havel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was Cain. a tiller of the ground. That's right. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought on brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahuwah. And Havel, uh, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof, and Yahuwah had respect unto Havel. And to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, Why are you wroth? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, shall you not be accepted? Mm. And if you do not well, sin lies at the door. Mm. And unto you shall be his desire, and you shall rule over him. And Cain talked with Havel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Havel, his brother, mm -hmm. and slew him. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, Where is Havel, your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? That's, that's really a smart... If you think about somebody saying something like that to the most high, that's somebody being smart. I don't know where he at, and he did know where he was. Yeah, you're a liar. You're a sit up a liar. Yeah, he did know where he was. And he said, well, am I my brother's keeper? Did you make me his keeper? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised y'all didn't give him a, a heavenly smack upside his head. You right know? then and there. Mm -hmm. Knocked him down in the garden. Yeah, exactly. Who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just kill him for a minute, let him lay there dead, and then bring him back. Now, now what do you think now? Where's your brother? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if the most I did that? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Boy. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. From the ground, uh-huh. And now are you cursed from the earth, which has opened up her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto you her strength, 
a fugitive and a vagabond, vagabond. shall you be in the earth. Mm -hmm. And Cain said unto El Yahuwah, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face and from your face shall I be hidden, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me shall slay me. And Yahuwah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah set a mark upon <clears throat> Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Okay, that's good. Ain't right that's there. not that. So even with that, the Most High said, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look out for you. I'm going to have a little mercy I'm on you. Have a little mercy on you. Now, you know yeah. what I find amazing? Okay. So, Cain <laughs> grew up with his brother Abel for years. They've been knowing each other for years. Probably was playing around when they were young and doing stuff together, working together, right? And then all because one did something that was right and the other one did something that's wrong. Cain, Cain didn't do he didn't, didn't do things right, right, when it came to the sacrifice. And, but Abel did. And so he went and said he talked with Abel, his brother, first before he slew him. Don't that make you wonder what mm -hmm. was said? They talked with each other. So he talked with him after he got done talking with him. Cain, Abel was probably happy that y'all received his blessing there. He's probably happy and probably was like, man, this is a blessing, man. You know, he's probably all happy. And Cain was sitting there probably looking at him like this. All jealousy set in. Mm, mm, mm. Jealousy set in because his offering was not accepted, but, Cain, but Abel's was. And so after that jealousy set in, he sat there and he started contemplating. He said, I just can't live with him around me. Because he makes me look bad. Who do you think he You is? are already looking bad. Mm -hmm. Abel wasn't making you look bad. You made yourself look bad, right? You think you're going to all of a sudden start looking good because Abel ain't around Yeah, no more? yeah. You did what you did and y'all felt what he felt. Yep. So all that time you were around him, you threw all that stuff out because of jealousy and anger. Yeah, that's right. Caribbean princess says Cain had a heart problem. Isn't that something? He had a heart problem. So yes, that he means did. wickedness was in his heart. Yes, it was. It was in his heart. Yes. And so when that wickedness is in your heart, it's going to manifest through your actions. Yes. So your actions are actually a manifestation of what's already inside. Yes. So this is why people need to seek to have that stuff purged out of them. Mm -hmm. Don't let these spirits rest up in you. Don't let these yes. spirits ride around on your back. Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of this stuff because in mm -hmm. the end, if you allow these spirits to take hold of you and use you in yes. that way, it's going to be for your demise ultimately. Yeah, ultimately it's going to be your demise. Mm -hmm. You know what's amazing about this? So then after he didn't kill his brother that he grew up with, saw they were together all those years, he went out and acted like it was no big deal. That's how cold he was. Mm -hmm. That's a coldness. Mm -hmm. You see that in today's time. That's yeah. coldness. Mm -hmm. You know, now all of a sudden, say, well, where your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he at. You know, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, now pay attention. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. I want you to see this. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to look at verse 10. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. See, the earth is filled with people who are dishonest, people who are greedy, people who are not righteous in their being, not righteous in their doing. The earth is filled with that. This is why the scripture says only a remnant are going to be saved, only a remnant, because the earth is filled with low-down people. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Read 8 through 10. So that's Matthew chapter 24. Verses 8 through 10. And these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Offended and shall betray one another. I'm sorry. And then shall many be offended and mm. shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. Mm, okay. Now you hear this. It says many shall be offended. So people gonna get offended, and when that offense, when that uh, offendedness steps in, then they gonna start to betray one another. Isn't yes. that something? Mm -hmm. And hate one another. They gonna hate one. Another. They gonna they gonna they gonna um uh, betray one another. 
Mm-hmm. This is the last day. Yahushua talking about the last days is going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of this going on, right? A lot of it. And and what's what's amazing <clears throat> is um, a lot of the things that people are offended by is yeah. the truth. Yeah. This is why in the New Testament it says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the mm-hmm. truth? People are offended by yeah. the truth, by right? By the truth. And this is why you have such offenses. Now, there are things that people are doing that cause offenses that ain't got nothing to do with the truth. Right. Some people are trying to use the word of the Most High de- um, deceitfully. Yes. Scripture says that too, that many shall use his word deceitfully. Yes. And it even talks about how Judah, the tribes of Judah, would serve him faintedly. Yes. Meaning falsely. Mm-hmm. And they are going to be using the word of the Most High deceitfully. That's right. You know, trying to use the Bible to deceive people. That's right. Think about all of the ministers and preachers and teachers and pastors who use the word of the Most High to try to justify deviant sexual lifestyles mm-hmm. or deviant behavior. They try to use the Bible to justify hating other people. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right? Isn't that something? And so all of these things, you have to look at what? The pattern of betrayal. Yes. So people will use the Bible to try to give you a valid reason. Yes. Or a deceitful reason to say this is why I'm betraying you. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, because the Bible says this. The Bible says that. Yes. The Bible tells me to do this. The Bible tells me to do that. <clears throat> right? Yes. You actually have some people who think it's uh, righteous and lawful to kill you if they think you're serving a false god. And so, some of them uh, think that false god is the Messiah. They exactly. Say, that false god, exactly. You're serving a false god. One, one brother um, um, yep. sent me a text and said, you serving this false god. And I said, what false god do you think I'm serving? I said, I still ask him. So what false god is it you think I'm serving? And then when he came and said the Messiah, yep. I said, oh, okay, so you one of them Old Testament believers don't believe in the right. New Testament. Let's mm. Get on with that. <laughs> they don't believe you know? in the New Testament. Yeah. And so they say that you are following, following um, a false god. We That's remember right. many years ago, this brother was trying to uh, come and visit us. <laughs> we told y'all about this. Mm-hmm. He was trying to come visit us after having uh, this long conversation. Um, on the phone with Watchman, he was referred to us by um, a sister who said, well, so-and-so wants to speak to you. So we spoke to the brother and the whole conversation, he's yelling at uh, Watchman, um, trying to convince him that um, the New Testament is invalid and that you're serving a false Elohim. And he says, you know, according to the Bible, well, I'm supposed to stone you, mm-hmm. right? Tell well, us you're you supposed to stone me, but, but, but then you want our address <laughs> to come visit us. <laughs> You out of your mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You think that the Most High has mandated you to come and stone somebody, but you want to come visit us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really a sick mind. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, who do you think you are that you're supposed to cast Mm -hmm. the first stone? Yeah. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes you one of the type of people that was around you, Husha Mashiach. They were always trying to stone them. Always trying to stone folk, but yep. he said, he that's without sin, cast the first stone. Mm-hmm. Everybody had to drop their stones and walk away because they knew they had sin. But even in today's time, it. you have people who are riddled with sin, yep. thinking that they are supposed to be the first one to cast the stone. Ain't that Mm-mm-mm. something? And they ready to do it too. It's Mm-mm-mm. like you got to first sweep around your own front door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> before you try that's an old Christian song y'all sweep around your own front door yeah. before you try to sweep around mine mm, mm, mm. Wow. <laughs> y'all remember that y'all remember that with family <laughs> I think it was the Williams brothers mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so now watch this I want y'all to pay attention now so back to what we were saying so here Judas was with the Messiah for three years that, that, that gotta make you think right so he was with, we ain't talking about he was with um um, your cousin Ray Ray or Pookie or, or, or John, your little John, you know, <laughs> he was with the Messiah. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you here, he was with the Messiah for three years, the most righteous person that have ever come down from heaven, uh-huh. right? The most righteous, more righteous than the angels. He was with the Messiah for three years. And so after three years, Something worked up in you to want to come against him, but he was offended, right? Watch this. This is John chapter Mm -hmm. 6, and this is verse 60 through 71. Okay. Mm -mm. John chapter 6. Verse 60. 
Watch this now. I'm going to have to get one of those thimbles uh, to turn <laughs> pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's John chapter 6, verses 60 through 71. And it reads as follows. <clears throat> it says, Many, therefore, of his Talmudim, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Mm -hmm. Who can hear it? When Yahushua knew in himself that the Talmudim murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? Oh, now stop there. Wrap there. Right? <laughs> he was talking to the disciples and Judas was one of them. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Judas was one of them. And when he, what he said to them, basically he was talking, telling them, you got to eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. You won't have no life. And so they were like, this is, they got offended by that, right? And so Yahushua said, do, do this offend you, right? So Judas was among them. He was offended too. Keep reading now. It says, What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Ruach that quickens. Mm -hmm. and the flesh profits nothing. Nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Ruach and they are life. They are life. But there are some of you that believe not. Okay, keep going. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. And who should betray him? Whoa, wait a minute. Why is that there? You see that? Mm -hmm. He knew from the beginning. From so the when, beginning. He, when he called the 12 and he was sitting there with the 12 and he said, yeah, y'all going to be my disciples. We're going we gonna to preach to people. Wait a minute. Did you know Judas was among those that went, the 70, the men that went out and they healed people? He was among them. Mm -hmm. He wrought miracles right along with the apostles. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. He was right there with them. Yes. Woo! -wee. Pay attention, right? It's gonna get deep. Keep going. So y'all knew Yahushua knew from the beginning that Judas was gonna betray him. Keep going. He said from the beginning he knew who would betray him. Mm -hmm. He already knew. I already knew it. Yep. And he said, "Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father." Mm, mm, mm. Wow. So even with that statement. He's saying the father placed it in Judas to come unto him. Mm, mm, mm. So the father has something planned all out. This is Predestinated. Why the this is why the scripture says Yahushua was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. That's right. So Yahushua knew and the father knew too. Mm. Yeah. So they weren't sitting down and saying, oh, things are getting out of hand. Mm -mm. What's going on here? Wow. They knew from the beginning. They knew from the beginning. <laughs> it says, from the time, from that time, many of his Talmudim went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahushua unto the twelve, will you also go away? Mm. Listen. Then Shimon, Peter, Kepha answered him, Adonai, to whom shall we go? Mm -hmm. You have the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that you are that Mashiach, the son of the living Elohim. Yahushua answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve and one of you is the devil? <laughs> See, that's why I said he knew this Ooh. whole thing that he was talking here, this mm -hmm. is what he was referring to. Judas. Mm -hmm. He said he knew that when, when they all got up and those other people got up and they walked up, he looked over at the 12 looking, looking right at Judas right there. He said, y'all going to leave too? And Peter said, where are we going to go, right? But you should sit there and say, yeah, I, I, I called all you 12, but one of y'all is a devil. And they was probably like, <laughs> Ooh, which one? Which one? Wow. Mm, mm, mm. That's what the spirit of discernment will wow. do. Wow. It'll let you know that uh, of those that are called even, mm -hmm. that there is a devil yeah. in the midst. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Read that last verse. Wow. He spoke of Yehuda. Judas. Iscariot. Yep. The son of Shimon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Mm, mm, mm. There it is. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. So he didn't the mo so Yahushua didn't say, um, uh, oh, I sense or I deserve that he's gonna betray me. Mm -hmm. He said that the work of Yah might be fulfilled. Yeah. I gotta I gotta choose him too. He got he got to come along. Yeah, he knew it when he chose me. He, he knew it the, when he chose him. He said that looked over at Judas, he said, You come on too, man. Yeah. 
Juice probably came all got close all to him. Him aside, love <laughs> he you. He chose me. It's let's get a, let's get a selfie me. together. It's a selfie, you know. <laughs> it's definitely not me. It must be one of the other eleven. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, but y'all knew. Oh my goodness! It's like it ha- speaking those kind of words. Yeah. I mean, he told. He said, "Look, one of y'all, the devil." That should have made that person's heart jump at that moment. Mm-hmm. And and at least try to say, well, can, can, can I repent? Because I'm feeling something. But, you know, that yep. the work of Yah might be fulfilled. He had to do what he had to he do. He had to do what he had to right? do. Right? Exactly. Just like Yahushua was the lamb slain before the foundation of the exactly. world. Exactly. Judas Iscariot was chosen to be that devil that before devil. the foundation of the world. Yes. That the work of Yah might be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. That right there is just such a hard thing to yeah. to um, accept at times. Because you say to yourself, man, so all of this was already mapped out. That's why we tell y'all this is already a written book. Your life is a written yeah. book. Yeah, it's that... already a written book. Yeah. There's a finish, an ending to that book. That's why it says better the Jews wasn't even born. Yeah, that's what it says. He was be- he been better not even being born. Right. Wow. But then it would have had to be somebody else because the work of Yah had to be fulfilled. Yep. Oh my god. That's really a sad. I mean, to think of Judas, I mean, this man is gone now. Forever. Mm -hmm. Never getting out of hell. Mm -hmm. Forever Mm -hmm. there. And it's like he never even had a chance. Never Never had a chance. The day he was born, he was a marked man. A marked man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That should be enough to make you fall on your knees. And cry out to the Father. And you know the devil yeah. got in his heart because what happened? Afterwards, he felt sorrowful. Right. He's like, man, can you believe what I did? Threw the silver down. He was off just feeling sorrowful and stuff, right? And went out and hanged himself because he felt bad for what he did. So Satan entered in his heart long enough mm-hmm. to get him to do what he needed him to do. And after he got done, he came to his senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. If y'all remember the story, the mm-hmm. scripture talk about how Satan entered, entered into his heart, right? Yep. It also says that Yahuwah mm-hmm. put that spirit on him. Yep. Ooh, my goodness. Wow. That's the scary part. Yeah, that is scary. You know, this is why when the scripture tells us that the Most <clears throat> High sends strong delusions, yeah. it's like he up there doing stuff that people would label the devil as being guilty of, right? Yes. But when the Most High sends strong delusions, he's basically sending spirits or the devil or angels to cause things to happen. For his own good pleasure. See, that's the Yahuwah nobody wants to know. Everybody wants to think of God as the world calls him. As just some person sitting on a cloud. Making all the good in the land happen. Yes. And that the devil is the one who makes all the bad in the land happen. Mm -hmm. Everything that's bad that happens in the earth has to be the devil, right? Yes. This is what people want you to believe. But they don't understand that the Most High is too powerful for that. Yeah. He is too powerful for that. Everything that happens, yeah. good or bad, was orchestrated and ordained by the Most High Yah. Satan got to get permission. He just can't do yes, anything. That's right. Don't you know Satan wanted to? He'd kill every every last one of Yah's people if he could. Yeah. He'd slay every last one of them if he could. Satan, if he could, he would he would he would have everybody put push all those nuclear buttons, kill everybody. If he wanted to, he would. If he could, he would do that, right? Mm-hmm. Satan again can't do that, so he's being held back. He got to get permission to do anything Everything, that he's gonna do, no matter how big or small. Right? Let me watch this, right? So even the designated angels that Yah has chosen mm-hmm. to bring forth the wrath of Yah, huh? Our some sit back waiting. They just can't. They got orders to do what they got to do. That's right. But they just can't do it. That's right. They got to wait till the appointed time, right? So even those that got a jurisdiction to do whatever they want to do, the Yah has given them, right, the, the okay. He's given them it written, right, in the word that they can go and they can bring down these plagues, right? Mm-hmm. They got to wait. Then he tells he says, wait, wait, until hurt not the grass, right? Mm-hmm. Until the 144,000 are sealed in their heads, until right? Until the appointed time. Woo! Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so Satan, Satan can't just do... He just can't do anything, right? Okay. Somebody said Satan is on Yah's leash. That's yeah. right. Yeah. He's yeah. on a leash. He can't just, yeah. <laughs> when you leash a dog and you, you, you let the leash go, then he can do stuff, yeah. right? The, the but as long as you hold right. that leash, he can't go nowhere yeah. that you don't allow him to go. And we've often said this, the devil is Yah's devil. He's Yah's devil. He's Yah's devil. I remember somebody had a problem <laughs> with that years ago. They said, um, Watchman said that 
<laughs> the devil is God's devil. Yeah, he is. Who's would he be? Who created him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he is. It yeah. is what it is, y'all. That's why he showed up <laughs> at, at, at Job's at the, at the meeting mm-hmm. in heaven. And, and yeah, he asked him. He said, you, it's Satan, I know you're doing a lot of stuff out there, work, but have you considered Job? <laughs> you know I did, but you won't let me get to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said I'm having conversations with yeah, y'all. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Even even though he thought he can ascend above the most high, he know who sits high and looks yeah. low. He know who the boss is. He wanna be that. Yeah. But has he been able to achieve that? And no, he, he tried hasn't. he tried to do his little thing. Y'all threw him down. He said that's why that's why the Messiah said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling to the ground. <laughs> because when Satan tried to rise up, y'all was like popping just like a little flea, just pop on out of here. And he just went flying down the there, bam! You know, <laughs> lightning, <laughs> yeah, to the ground real fast, right? Yeah. So now I've meant to give y'all the scripture. This is the scripture that lets you know that Judas was among the twelve. Um, this is um Matthew chapter ten, and I'm gonna start. If I can read this verse um two. Okay. It says, now the names of the 12 apostles are these, and it names all of the apostles in this passage here. Then it would, when it gets down to verse 4, it says, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So he was among that bunch. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 26. And let's look at verse 16. Matthew. Did I already cover that? Matthew 26. No, I didn't. 26, 16. Matthew chapter 26. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse 16 reads. You can start at verse 14. Read 14 through 16. Okay, Matthew chapter 26, uh, verses 14. Through 16 reads as follows. Then one of the 12 called Yehuda Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Uh huh. Man, he sounds just like the Judas goat that said, um, yeah. if you spare my life, yeah. I'll lead the rest of those sheep right to right you. Right to you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. So he does something. So now if you remember, we read Mm -hmm. verse 10, chapter 10, verse 4, where it talked about Judas was among the 12. Mm -hmm. Now after all those years, and went back here, Judas, now he's seeking for an opportunity to betray him. So now all this time, all those things had to settle in his mind. So first, what happened? He got into that close relationship with the Most High, right? Mm-hmm. Then he got offended. Then he, um, obviously, uh, uh, the Messiah became diminished in his eyes. Because why would you, if you thought he was the Messiah, why would you mm-hmm. co- um, uh, conspire to um, to uh, betray him, right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't if you thought he was the Messiah. So, in other words, the Messiah looked very low to him. See, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people, when they get close to you, they get around you, and they sit there and they realize... Man, I thought he was um I thought he was a god, but now I realize he's just a man just like me. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you know he was a man just like you? Because he got up and went to the bathroom. Oh, really? <laughs> mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I'm telling you right now, that's how people are. That's why it kind of reminds me of when um when uh, John was out in the wilderness and they said, What did you think you was gonna come out here and see? A man in King's garden? Yeah. See the thing is people don't like humble people. They really don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you walk around acting like this Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. My fellow brothers and sisters and you got on these uh priestly garments all yes. the time and you got your, your crown on your head and all this kind of stuff, people will treat you a certain way. Re- yeah. tr- treat you a certain way, right? Yeah. But if you if you're like John in the wilderness well, if you're like Ezekiel or one of them, folk thought Ezekiel was crazy, didn't they? Mm-hmm. But he was a man of the most high, right? But when they saw John, they was like, look at him. 
He, he even smelled bad, right? Oh, wild looking. Love, probably got love, honey all in his beard and stuff, you know? He's like, probably wash it in the lake. Mm-hmm. And you know how the lake smells, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's when I say people, they don't understand they things. At you, the way you they, dress they're looking it. at the outward appearance. That's why y'all chose David. Because mm-hmm. David had a ruddy look about him. He wasn't all nice looking like his brothers were probably all nice and strong looking and had their armors on and everything. And then Samuel looked over at the little boy over there and said, no, he's the one that's going to take down this giant. Not the one that y'all thought. Not the one y'all thought. You get what I'm saying? So we look at the outward appearance. So so guess what? Brother come around you, Ray. He mm-hmm. got everything. He dressed completely to the T. Got his beard all down. This down here, right? Beard all down. He dressed his T. Fringes on and all that. And you just... Oh man, this is a that brother blessed right there. That's brother. Another brother come around, your beard all messed up, right? You know, have half beard on this side, and, and this ain't going right for him, and you ain't got no fringes on. He looking like this, and you look over at him, look like, oh, he ain't blessed. Couldn't possibly be a blessed brother. Uh-uh, no way, no way. This is why. This is why a lot of people are drawn to a lot of the big bishops. You know, they're drawn to these name brand preachers yeah. because they go there and they sit up in this mega church. They say he's got to be blessed. Look at how big this church is. Yes. And look at the car he driving. Mm-hmm. Now that's proof that that bishop is blessed. Yes. And he's an apostle. Mm-hmm. That one right there. He's a prophet, or yes. she's a prophetess, right? Yes. They got to be blessed. Look at look at their house. Look at their car. Yes. Look at all that money. They have an estate with a big 10,000 square foot house mm-hmm. on it. They got to be blessed of God. Look at all the millions of people following him, right? Mm-hmm. I'm and so they y'all. make the determination yeah. that that person is worthy of double honor. Yeah. But they had no idea that that person ain't even called of Yah. Mm-hmm. The number mm-hmm. of people who flock to these, these big name brand preachers because of how the church looks or because of how the preacher looks or because of how the preacher speaks. That is the spirit of deception that mm-hmm. is out there because people, they look at those things. They look at the outer appearance, but the most high looks at the heart. That's right. They, the most high looks at the heart. So this yes. is why John was blessed, y'all. That's right. He was blessed, even though he was out there in the wilderness eating what? Wild, Wild locusts and honey. Locust and honey. Mm-hmm. He was blessed. They probably, man, you need to get yourself a real meal, man. We got bread back over at the tent here. You want some bread? You ain't got to you eat know, bugs, man. You got to eat bugs, man. What you out here like that, for? Honey? You supposed to be, you supposed to represent the most high better than that. Yeah. And he's like, I am representing the most high doing what he told me to do. I'm where he want me to be. Mm-hmm. But it ain't good enough to you because, wow. because he looked too wild. Yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me, and we're going to talk about this one day. We're going to talk about this. It kind of reminds me of how a lot of um, biblical people, Yah- Yahoo mm-hmm. had mentioned this one time, that a lot of biblical people mm-hmm. would not even be getting the recognition that many get today. They wouldn't even be accepted. Half of uh, half of Yah's people would not even accept some of the men that you see in the scriptures that the scriptures talk about. You wouldn't even accept them. Mm-hmm. You look at them and say, ain't no way in the world that's a child of Yah. Ain't no way. How would people you know? have accepted Ezekiel and mm, all? Mm, mm. John and all of those? Now, King David, maybe maybe because he was a king. Mm-hmm. But what about those mm-hmm. like Ezekiel? Yeah. Huh? Like like um, um, Elijah. Yeah. Some of the prophets that lived out in the wilderness. They mm-hmm. didn't even come around people. You know, they only came around people just to give a message and he they gone again. Yeah. Right? That's how <laughs> Elijah was. He was always vanishing. That's why people thought he was moving around through portals or something, you know? <laughs> there's some teachings out there that teaches he was jumping through portals, mm, right? Mm, mm. And, and and there's some there's some things out there that's in the scriptures that'll shock you if I was to bring them out, right? Mm. <laughs> About Elijah, you'd be like, whoa, really? Yeah, there's some things out there that Elijah did that was pretty shocking, right? Supernatural, right? right? But the point that I want you to understand is many of these people of the scriptures, you wouldn't want nothing to do with them. If you saw them and they came around you, you would say, ah, uh, no, there can't be a man of, of the Most High. Not him. Not him. He ain't dressed apart. You come around you, you heard some of the things he would say and do, you would be like, man, wait a minute here, you know? And that's the problem. There's too much of that going on. So when they see that stuff, they get offended. Then and you diminished in their eyes, and now now they look at you. Ah, uh, you know, I betrayed that brother in a minute. He, 
he ain't all that. And that's where you get that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to, I like this scripture. Let's go to the scripture. This is Matthew chapter 10, again, verse 21. Matthew chapter 10, verse 21 reads as follows. It says, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Mm, now watch this. He's talking about the last days. In the he last said, days. This is going to take place in the last days, y'all. Where well, you going to see? Now, I'm going to be honest with you, right? I remember the first time I read this stuff, some of this stuff back in the days, I was a young man. I probably wasn't nothing but about 10, 11 years old when the first time I read some of this stuff. <clears throat> I thought to myself that I would, I, I, I would have never heard of this kind of thing and I would never see it, mm -hmm. right? But I was in high school when these two girls who went to high school with me had their mother killed. Well, didn't they do it themselves? No, they had, there was a guy that they oh, knew okay. that they had killed their mother. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Gil Hill, um, um, the chief. he was a prosecutor yeah. at the time, and he uh, he prosecuted him. He was like, he, he went off on him in court and was like, y'all had your mother killed, you know? And I remember when that whole thing went down. But they went to high school with it. One of the girls terrorized my niece, mm -hmm. you know? And guess what? <clears throat> These girls were lesbians. They're like big dudes, you know? So they already had a deviant spirit all over them. already had something going them. on. That's right. So. Usually when you, I when never you thought. When people let spirits yeah. like that, it usually don't just be one. Those yeah. spirits, they go get other demons. They say, oh, this is an easy one right here. Yeah. If this person letting this spirit in, hey, let's bring this one too and this one and this yeah. one. So it don't usually be one spirit that be riding a person. Yeah. If a person allow one spirit to ride, other spirits are yes. right there waiting to come in too. That's right. This is why you got to put on the whole armor yes. of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles yeah. of the devil, the devices. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want you to pay attention to something, right? So we see that this betrayal thing is going to happen in the last days. I want you to see something here. Let me let me find this scripture real quickly here. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> That's right. Vessel of Yah says demons travel in packs. That's right. P.I., one of our uh, moderators, says cluster spirits. That's right. Legions will follow. That's right. When you allow demons to just swarm around you so easily and so freely, no matter how small you think it is, no matter how little you think the situation is, um, it's the little foxes that destroy the vine, right? Mm -hmm. Those little ones uh, become something greater. Because they bring <clears throat> back others to overtake you until right. you are destroyed. That's right. They use you after they're done using you to torment others. Then they're going to take you out too. That's how these spirits work. Yeah. Don't even give them access. <clears throat> yeah. When you give them access, you're like giving them free reign. Yep. Yeah. Now, I want y'all to understand something, right? Okay. One of the things that's going to cause this type of, of um, wickedness of where people are going to be um, um, betraying betraying mm -hmm. one another is jealousy. Look at the scripture. This is, I'm going to read this. So this is Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It says, Yahuwah shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Mm. He shall cry, your war. <clears throat> he shall prevail against his enemy. So he's going to stir up jealousy. He's talking about in the last days. He's going to stir it up. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you if you find yourself jealous of someone else, you got a serious problem. And there's probably a demon working with you, and you need to deal with that demon. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. If jealousy is stirring up in you, then you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And you need to deal with it before it gets you into some serious trouble. Mm -hmm. You need to look at yourself. When I, if, if you see somebody with something you don't have, it's the best thing to do is just say, "Father God, bless me too, bless me." You know, and don't be, don't, don't get angry with the brother when you see what he has, or the sister what she had, or whoever it is. Be thankful for them. Be thankful for them, but don't allow yourself to be pulled into this thing of jealousy, 
Because I'm telling you right now, the end of it is death for you. Mm -hmm. The end is death. So, <laughs> what came to mind when you read that Yahuwah shall stir up jealousy? Mm -hmm. We keep on telling y'all, he the one send stuff. He the one sending strong delusions. He the one sending this spirit yeah. and that spirit, right? He's doing it. So, what he's doing when he sends spirits and he stirs up things, he is getting you slated for your judgment, right? Mm, mm, mm. He's getting you ready. Remember yep. the meetings that take place in heaven. We have to remind you all of that from time to time. When it was time for Ahab to be taken out. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all remember what happened, um, Shem and yep. Benjamin? When it was time for Ahab to be taken out, there was a meeting in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, you remember. There was a meeting in heaven. Yep. And there was a spirit that volunteered. Yeah. He said, I'll go down there. I'll go down and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet. Mm, mm, mm. So when the Most High stirs up jealousy, y'all got to know that there's something going on in heaven. He's stirring up spirits, right? Stirring up jealousy. Yep. So there's a meeting in heaven. And so everybody who was not Listen. in alignment with the purpose of y'all in their lives, right? Yep. Everybody who is rebelling, let's just say it like that. Everybody yeah. who is rebelling against the truth rebelling against the work of Yah, he is going to stir up these spirits, mm -hmm. going to stir up the spirit of jealousy. And if it takes hold of you, that means he's after you. you wow. Think, you think that he's after the person you jealous of because there are people who will get jealous of somebody and then they'll try to make moves to try to destroy that person. Then next thing you know, you, they find themselves on their back, mm -hmm. kicking their legs like a dead roach mm -hmm. or a roach just dying. Because that spirit <laughs> roasted them been sprayed. That's yeah. right. <laughs> because the most high allowed that spirit to take hold of the person who yes. had the spirit of jealousy. But he stirs it up. He can only stir it up in a person whose spirit can accept that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only if your spirit can accept that, meaning you are not protected. That's you right. didn't put on the whole armor of Yah. Yeah. Right? Right. You didn't have on that helmet of salvation. You didn't have that shield. When you felt that spirit of jealousy come on, come into your mind, mm -hmm. you didn't have your helmet on, right? Mm -hmm. And if and if you did, if you didn't have on the whole armor, but you felt it come, but you had the sword, you had the power at that moment mm -hmm. to use that sword to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But instead, you didn't use your sword; you just let it fester. If that spirit came to you, you should have said, "Okay, you get out of here. I mm -hmm. rebuke you in the name of Yahushua Mashiach." And then you should have put your helmet on, right? Mm, mm, Watch mm. this, right? I want you to think about what I'm about to tell you, right? Think about this very carefully, right? So there's a just, there, there's a call in heaven, right? And Yah says, you know what? Saul has messed up. Mm. Saul did not do what we told him to do, what, what was ordered of him to do by Samuel. He wouldn't did his own thing. So now I need to remove him from the kingdom. Mm. And we need to totally just remove him. He, I need him dead. He got to go. He got to go. Mm. So when that meeting took place, right, how are we going to do this to Saul? Mm. A jealous spirit came forth and said, we're going to make him jealous of David. Ooh. Yeah. And we're going to make him get crazy. So crazy in his mind with this jealousy of David until he's going to do everything he can to kill David. That's why Saul, when he heard uh, David, David uh, Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens, tens of, thousands. of thousands. It angered him. Yes. He's, Man, they only attributed a thousand to me and ten thousand to David. Mm. You know, and that jealousy set in and he wanted David dead. But that spirit was really setting him up for death that's right that's wow right. ain't that something it was setting him up for death mm, mm, until mm. they finally took him out are y'all hearing this mm, so mm, when mm. you allow spirits to run rampant in your mind and in your life and use you like that and you can't even understand that this is a spirit using you you think you got this person yep you think that your words are just gonna just destroy them you think your actions are gonna destroy them you think what you're doing is something slick yeah. you think you're doing something smart yeah that was really a spirit that was stirred up against you where did the spirit come from became on Saul it says in the inscription three or four places it says Yahuwah sent the evil spirit 
mm, upon mm, Saul. Mm, mm, it mm, says it in the word that Yahuwah sent an evil spirit upon Saul. Mm, mm, it's mm, right there in the word. Mm, 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 you see what I'm saying? So those of you out there that got this jealousy thing working on, you better check yourself and you better get rid of that thing quick because it's going to take you out. It's trying to take you out. It's trying to take mm, you out. Mm, That's, right. Mm. That's right. Especially if that person praying and that person saying mm. no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every <laughs> tongue that rise against me a judgment y'all shall condemn. You better watch out if that person praying because it might come on you faster. Yeah, that's right. If that person is saying I return to sender every curse spoken or implied yes. against me, against my family, yep. against all that I do, if that person praying, you better watch out mm, because mm, now mm. they are activating the judgment of y'all against you because your prayers that are being spoken or your words of evilness that are being spoken are now going to be redirected towards you. Yes. This mm, is why mm, people, mm. they plan in the spirit. They think they know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. They don't know who they're dealing with. They don't understand that this flat plane that we live on in these human bodies, this fleshly body, mm -hmm. that there is a spirit realm out there. Yes. There is another dimension out there, family, right? There are battles going on that you cannot yes. see with your natural eye. Okay? You can't see these battles with your natural eye. Yes. Through the spirit, though, the most high can show you these things. And this is why it's very important to know and understand yes. spiritual warfare. I want all of my children to understand how to engage yes. in spiritual warfare. Yes. Absolutely. Every last one of you. I want yep. y'all to know how to engage in spiritual warfare. Because the scripture says, for the weapons of our warfare are mm -hmm. not carnal, but mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. This is what we all need to understand, family. Yes. Spiritual warfare. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go to First Kings chapter thirteen and read one through thirty-one. First Kings chapter thirteen verses one through thirty-one reads as follows: It says, "And behold, there came a man of Elohim out of Yehuda by the word of Yahuwah unto Bethel, Bethel, uh -huh. and Yerovam, Jehoabam, stood by the altar to burn incense." And he cried against the altar in the word of Yahuwah, the word of Yahuwah, and said, O altar, altar, thus says Yahuwah, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David. Yoshiahu, by name, Josiah, mm -hmm. and upon you shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon you, and men's bones shall be burned upon you. And he gave a sign the, sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahuwah has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Elohim, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it again to him. Mm -hmm. The altar, altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, mm -hmm. according to the sign which the man of Elohim had given by the word of Yahuwah. And the king answered and said unto the man of Elohim, Entreat now the face of Yahuwah, Elohika, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. Mm -hmm. And the man of Elohim besought Yahuwah, and the king's hand was restored to him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of Elohim, Come home with me, and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. And the man of Elohim said unto the king, If you will give me half your house, I will not go in with you, Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Okay, I can take it from here. 
I wanted so. to make a point real quick. It's like don't, no matter what that king offered him, he yeah. said, I don't, "You can give me half of what you what you yeah. got. I'm not gonna turn away from the most high." Yes, ain't that something? Ain't that something? <laughs> it says, "And now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, okay. and his sons came and told him mm -hmm. all the words that the man of, of Elohim had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them <clears throat> they told also to their father." And their father said unto them, What way would he? And his sons had seen what way the man of Elohim sorry, went, sorry. which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me an ass. So they saddled him at the ass, and he rode thereon, thereon, and went after the man of Elohim, and found him sitting on after an oak. Hmm. And he said unto him, I thought the man of Elohim that came uh, from Judah. And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, that I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it is said to me by the word of Yahuwah, thou shalt not eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way thou comest, camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of Yahuwah, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat and drink. But he lied unto him. Mm, mm, mm. And so he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank. And it came to pass that after he had he, after he had sat at the table, that the word of Yahuwah came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of, of Elohim that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, Forasmuch as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of Yahuwah, Thou hast not kept the commandment which Yahuwah thy Elohim commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in this place, of which Yahuwah did say, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. I'll let mm, you take mm, it from mm. here. I wanted to make a point about something real quick. It's <laughs> a trip out story. Notice mm -hmm. um, the prophet that came to him. He said, I'm a prophet too, just as you are. Mm hmm now get this, that prophet lied to him. Mm -hmm. But notice, notice the prophet said, an angel told me to tell you this. Yeah. He didn't lie and say Yahuwah said it. Mm -hmm. I think he knew better, right? <laughs> <That's> all... <laughs> he said an angel told me to tell you this. Mm -hmm. But then after it was all said and done, he came back and said, you disobeyed the word of Yahuwah. Mm, mm, this story mm. always gets me too. It gets me. It's like a, a prophet came and deceived another prophet by telling him an angel said. Then that same prophet came back and said, because you disobeyed the word of Yahuwah, mm, now mm, your mm. body and your carcass going to fall to the ground. Mm, mm, mm. That part right there always gets me. Yeah. It says, and it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom had gone that he had brought back and when he was gone a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it the lion also stood by the carcass and behold men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Notice it said the lion stood by the carcass. <laughs> in other words, it didn't eat it up. And it didn't even bother the, the donkey? Right. It only got him. That mean that lion had a mission. He had just a mission. go and kill that man and don't hurt that donkey. Just stand here just so. Don't eat the man either. Right. Just kill him. Stand right there so that the people <sighs> can come and see. And they can say, man, look at that. 
Lion standing right there, donkey standing right there, mm-hmm. carcass laying right there. Wow. Just so that the people can come and see it and they can run back and tell the old prophet. Yeah. Man. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this story gets me up. And it says, and when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of Elohim who was disobedient unto the word of Yahuwah. Therefore, Yahuwah has delivered him unto the lion which has torn him and slain him according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke unto him. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to the sons saying, saddle me the ass. And they saddled him and he went and found his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the ass. Mm, mm, mm. This, that's how you know this is Yah. A Yah sent. Mm, mm, this mm. is a Yah assassin. <laughs> this was an assassination by, by, by the Yah. Most High God, as the world yeah. calls it. That lion is an assassin, right? Keep going. It says, and the prophet took up the carcass of the man of Elohim mm-hmm. and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn. And to bury him? Mm, mm, mm. He cried? Yeah. Wow. Oh, keep going. He, it's going to get deep. Right? And he laid the carcass in his own grave. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass, after he had buried him, that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre, wherein the man of Elohim is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. Now, I want you to pay attention to this, right? I got the story for a reason. I want you to see mm, something. Mm, mm. This this old prophet bet- betrayed the man of Elohim. He betrayed him. And look at how he mm. betrayed him. He got up close to him, right? See, some of y'all need to see this image again. I need to show you this image again he got up close to him snuggled all up next to him got all, he come on back man I, i'm a prophet too yeah and the I'm a angel you. look he had to ask something to it. i didn't just hear from y'all no an angel came to me though mm-hmm. and told me you got to come back with me and have dinner with me and sit down and eat mm-hmm. he deceived him that was so devilish what that man him. did he lied to him like that 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 is a perfect example of a betrayal. He betrayed the man, but guess what? He got so close to him, and then after the man was dead, let me show you how, how twisted his mind is. Then he cried over him. You cried over him, wow. and you mourned. You went there, saw the lion there next to his body, and you and you and you cared so much about him. You went and got his body, got the donkey, and walked away. Lion didn't touch you either, huh? And you just walked away and took the donkey and took the lion and t- I mean took the um the man's body and made a grave for him, put a bit him and then he told his son, you know, when I die, put my bones right next to him. It sounds kind of sick, don't it? You stab the man in the Ooh, back and you want to bury him next to you, huh? Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling you, I I I you said my wooey. He got nice and close to him. I bet that lamb never knew that goat was about to kill him. Right. It, it kind of reminds me of this. If you just process what the Most High means when he tells us to be obedient. Right? Yes. So the Most High basically tells us, if you obey me, then all's going to be well with you. Yes. Right? If you do what I tell you to do, all will be well. But if you disobey, yes, most I can use whatever he wants and whoever he wants to carry out his judgment. Did you see that? And so in the man case, actually heard the voice of Yah after that, right? He, right. After he lied and deceived this man, he heard the voice of Yah. See, see, here's the thing the most I had already told him that if you do this, this is what's gonna happen to you. Mm-hmm. He already told him that he would perish, yep, if he disobeyed him. Most I already told him yes. this is what's going to happen to you. He told him directly if you go back into the city. So in the New Testament it comes and it says um, if uh, if um, if anybody come preaching anything of an angel or anybody comes yeah. saying anything to you other than what we have said, call him a curse. Call him a curse. Right? Yep. So in this case the prophet came and said that the angel said yeah. which was a lie. But in that case, you having heard the voice of Yah 
you were supposed to be obedient to the voice of Yah. Wow. My sheep hear my voice and another, they, they will, will not, not follow. follow. That's so right. even the mouth of a prophet who said that an angel mm -hmm. said, right? You ain't supposed to hear that voice. My sheep hear my voice yes. and another, they will not, they will follow. not so follow. When you disobey the voice of Yah, yep. the most high can even send a deceiver. Yes. In that moment, that man should have said, well, you know what? I know you said an angel told you this. Yeah. And that sounds all good and dandy. And it sounds all perfect. And I know you said you a prophet of the Most High too. You just might well be. I'm not here to argue that point. Right. But I know what the Most High told me. The Most High told me not to do this. Yeah. And so I'm sorry I can't do it. But because you heard that other voice, mm -hmm. the same judgment that the Most High already told that prophet he told that young prophet yep. at the word of the older prophet, uh -huh. it was still carried out. Still carried out. So so what did that tell you? When you think about this story, right? So since he heard from Yah in the first place to go to the place and speak to them, right? Mm -hmm. He should, when the other prophet came to say, what angel came to me, he should have said, well. He came to you, not uh, me. I got I to gotta get, I got to wait and let the most high tell me, mm -hmm. right? So you got too many people following other people blindly. Like the sheep follow the Judas goat. Yes. Or like the other cows follow the steer. The Judas steer. The Judas steer, right? Mm -hmm. The Judas steer has been has been humbled to the to the to the uh to the point of being like a heifer. Who? Are yes. you hearing me? Mm -hmm. He's been humbled to the point of being like a heifer, and you gonna follow him? He ain't got no backbone. He don't rise up against sin. And you gonna follow him? Mm, mm, mm. That's why I says a lot of there's a lot of Judas steer preachers out here. There's a lot of Judas steer leaders out here. Mm -hmm. Judas steers. And their only job is to lead you to the slaughter. Yep. The spiritual yep. slaughterhouse. This is why anything goes. That's this is why you have all these pop up churches that yeah. are have it your way churches right you can dress up your sandwich however you want to dress it up mm -hmm. right the meal that they prepare for you you can tell them look yep. i want this on it i don't want that can you take that off it's too it's that that right there is too strong i i can't deal with that you told me i can't do this right here mm -hmm. um but i don't agree with that so i, I need a sandwich that's tailor-made for me right mm -hmm. because i can't take it when it's too strong right i can't take the word when it's too heavy give mm -hmm. us soft mm -hmm. words I need something that I can digest. Yes. I can't really digest no um, real meat. So uh, give me some milk, right? That's what a lot of these preachers are doing. They are giving you yes. words that you can digest because you can't digest the truth because the truth is too powerful. Yeah, it's too powerful. They can't take it. Mm -hmm. Some people, I'm going to be honest with you, right? It's, it's really shocking when I see the doctrines and the things that have come out that people are preaching in the assemblies today. Mm -hmm. It's really shocking when you got the word just literally telling you what's right and what's wrong. But people have twisted their brains so because they, they want they want this thing to be a certain way. They want this person to say, they want that person to say. They want to bring all these weird spirits up in the assembly, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't see nothing wrong with it because they have justified these things. They've justified all this wickedness, mm -hmm. you know. And y'all ain't behind that stuff. No, he's not. He's not behind it. Right. This is Genesis chapter 37. We're going to read 12 through 36. This is concerning... Joseph and his brothers. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 37, verses 12 through 36 reads as follows. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Yashrael said unto El Yosef, Do not your brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray you, see whether it be well with your brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the valley of Chevron and he came to Shechem and a certain man found him and behold, he was wandering in the field mm -hmm. and the man asked him saying, what do you seek? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray you, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham 
and Yosef went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, because Joseph was having those dreams, y'all, pay mm -hmm. attention. Because mm -hmm. Joseph was having those dreams, they became jealous of him mm -hmm. because his father spoke so well of him because of the dreams. And his father loved him so much, right? Mm -hmm. Because he was having these dreams from Yahuwah. His mm -hmm. father was a spiritual man. And so when Joseph was having these dreams, it made his brothers feel like, man, like you don't care for us at all. You don't love us at all. And they, they got jealous of him, right? Now keep reading. It says, and they said one to another, behold, this dreamer comes. Mm. That proves, right? <laughs> they were jealous of him for the dreams, right? Yes. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Some evil beast. He said, let us slay him. Some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Mm, mm. See how much they hated the fact that he was having those dreams. They can't get it out. We will see what becomes after you dead and gone. We didn't slayed you. We're going to see what become of those dreams. Those are his brother. Wow. Yeah. Those mm, are his mm, brother. Mm. He was their little brother. Mm. So his big brothers that he was counting on to protect him that conspired against him to slay him. Mm. Wow. But they meant it for evil, but y'all yeah, meant it for good. good. <laughs> <laughs> right? All things work together for good. Yeah. All of this stuff had to happen. That's right. Right? <laughs> it's kind of scary, but... It is, yeah. right? And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into the pit that it is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So the oldest brother, mm -hmm. he had to bring some reasoning to this and say, look, we ain't going to kill our younger brother. Are y'all out of y'all mind? We can't do yeah. this. We can't <laughs> shed our brother's blood. Mm -hmm. He's our young brother. And you you want to do this to him? You that jealous? You that messed up in your head mm -hmm. that you want to do? But y'all have to remember the whole story, though. Yeah. The brothers meant it for evil, but y'all meant it for good. So when the Most High has a purpose, I love to point this out. When he has a purpose, he, <laughs> he will use whoever has a certain spirit in them to carry out yeah. his purpose and his plan. So he does look at the hearts of me. He say, oh, I can use them. Yeah. they. I get, first, I got to get them jealous. Yeah. So <laughs> let me get Joseph these dreams, you know, just have these dreams. In. But wait a minute. Father... Go make him a beautiful coat of many colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll that'll get him. <laughs> That's gonna get him for sure. Make him his coat of many. Put that coat on. Yeah, Joseph probably walked out looking like, hey brothers, <laughs> how do you like the coat? Think of father the coat gave father, me. Maybe they're probably sitting like, like, you think you something with that coat? <laughs> 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 that was really a funny scene. Jack. You think you better than us? You think you better than us? Do you something with that coat and just yank that coat off? I'm right. <laughs> they would sit back looking. I bet each time he walked out with that coat on, they were probably like, like, just boiling inside. Y'all stirred up the jealousy, he though. Stirred didn't it he? Up. he stirred it up. Y'all said, "I need them to, I need them to throw this man in this pit so he can go to. He need to go to Egypt, become a slave. I need to set this, got this thing all set up for him." So the angels was behind even controlling the sins of men mm. to bring about Ooh. what Yah wanted in the end. Woo! So even the sins of men were determined. Wow. Wow. The Bible says that God, as the world calls him, created good and he created evil. See, some of y'all can't handle this. You get what I'm saying? Some people's brain can't handle this, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the word. You can't have one without the other. If all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose, then all things work together for the bad. For That's those right. that are not a call, called according to his purpose, right. no matter what they do, it ain't going to get them no closer to the kingdom. Mm, mm, mm. Whew, 
works. All they works will be burn up. Mm, mm, that's the word. That's the word. Yeah, I know it's a hard one to swallow. Yes. But that's the word. Let's keep reading here. <laughs> and it came to pass when Yosef was come unto his brethren that they stripped Yosef of his coat. Why come y'all didn't just throw him down there with the coat? You get the, I got to take this coat from taking first. this coat. Uh-huh. <laughs> his coat. His of, coat of many colors mm -hmm. that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Yishmaelim came from Gilad and their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Mitzrayim. And Yehuda, for those of you who don't know, Mitzrayim is Egypt, modern day right. Egypt, okay? And Yehuda said unto his brethren, What profit is it for us? What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Yishmaelim, and let not our hand be put upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. So Judah mm -hmm. is the one who wanted to sell his brother into slavery. Mm-hmm. Mm. Judah's the one who wanted to sell his brother into slavery. Judah went into slavery as a result of it. Yep. That's how our people ended up in the land of our captivity because Judah That's right. wanted to sell the brother into slavery. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, I want to mm. bring this out too real quickly. I want y'all to think about this too. Okay. Um, Joseph's brothers, if I'm correct now, don't quote me on this, but I remember hearing this years ago about the story. I may have even read it, but I have to look back through the scriptures. But I remember reading a commentary where they were saying something about um, the um, Joseph's brothers were took the flock out to feed the flock and maybe in the chapter before it may be but they were saying that basically that the brothers were hungry and they wanted to kill one of the sheep and that's why they didn't want Dave, Jake, Jake, Joseph around them because they knew they he would tell Joseph, he would tell their father that yeah they killed one of the sheep and fe feasted on them. Now that could be just speculation you know but it just makes you wonder Joseph yeah, um, um, Joseph's father sent him there to kind of look look after his brothers mm -hmm. to see what they were doing because mm -hmm. he didn't need to really be there think about it he got 11 brothers there with the flock why are you sending joseph he sent joseph because he knew he could trust joseph mm -hmm. that's something to think about right yes someone pointed out in the chat that um judah um is just like judas isn't that something isn't that something wanted to betray his brother Mm, mm, Judah mm. was just like Judas. Isn't that something? Mm. Yeah, that's something to think about too. Another thing I want to say here is when you look down here at this verse here, the one that got me was verse 25, 24. It says, and they took him and cast him into the pit and the pit was empty and there was no water and they sat down to eat bread. So wow. You just threw your brother down in this empty pit, and you know it wasn't, it wasn't no six feet deep pit. You know it had to be at least 20 feet deep. You just threw him 20 feet or more down into this pit because it used to be a well. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So you're going to throw him down in this well. As soon as you toss him down, he probably down there screaming and stuff. Oh, brothers, no. There's no water threw him down. No water down. They threw him down in this pit, right? And then they go and sit down. Okay, let's eat now. So they sitting there eating like it ain't no the coldness. Then I'm tell you about it. Then oh. I tell you there's a coldness in those that betray somebody else. And they have to be close to see they were close to Joseph because they 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 saw him born. Mhm. Mm wow. Mhm. Mm that was one of their younger brothers and um they <laughs> like uh like Watchman said they saw him born. They saw him born. <laughs> so you said you saw him born, you saw how much your father loved him. That's why I ate away at them all those years that Joseph was gone. 
It ate away at them. That sin ate away at their hearts and their minds. It ate away at them. And they were probably like feeling like, I can't believe we did that to our brother. I can't believe that. You know Remember what I'm saying? The, um, th this is why the Apocrypha scriptures or yes. some of the lost books or whatever are so yeah. important because it gets deeper into the story. There was so much hatred in one of their hearts. It was either Dan or Gad, one of them. So much hatred yes. for their brother in his heart that he ended up getting a, a serious sickness. A sickness, yeah. Right? And he got so sick that um, their father, Jacob, had to pray for him, say, Father, don't kill him, heal him. Yeah. Right? Because he was about to die. That's how sick he got yeah. from the, the jealousy that had built up. This is why we say with these spirits, other spirits come. Right? Mm -hmm. And because of that spirit of hatred and jealousy, that brought about judgment as well. You can't just have these spirits and allow them to just rest on you because they actually start to rest in you and become mm -hmm. sicknesses. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And so continuing on, it says, Then in his liver, yep. they're passed by Mid Midianim, a uh, merchantman, and they drew and lifted up Yosef out of the pit and sold Yosef to the Yishmaelim for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Yosef into Mitzrayim or Egypt. He was sold to the Egyptians. And Reuben returned unto the pit and behold, Yosef was not in the pit and he rent his clothes and he returned unto his brethren and said, the child is not and I would and I, whither shall I go? Okay. I want you to notice something here, right? Just like they said, it's just like <clears throat> Judah and Judas. Mm -hmm. Did you pick up on it? They sold them to the Ishm Ish Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. Man. Don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. huh? Judas sold the Messiah for how many? 30, 30 pieces, pieces of silver. Of silver. Wow, are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. You see how it's just alike, right? Mm -hmm. Judah, Judas. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, Ru Reuben being the oldest brother, um, he, he did some trying, but he could have tried a little harder. But again, that the purpose of Yah might be fulfilled. This had to take yes. place. But it also shows you that the heart of Reuben was like, man, this, this just ain't right. He rent his clothes when they said he returned. He said the child is not there. So Joseph was way younger than them, right? Mm. Way younger, much younger than yeah. them. So when he saw that his little brother was not there, he rent his clothes. He said the boy is not, the child is not there in the pit. Mm, mm, mm. So we got to really pay attention, you all, to the mm -hmm. spirits that we allow to enter into our hearts because they will cause you to carry yes. out things. We are talking about the pattern of betrayal. You have to understand mm -hmm. the patterns that exist in the world today. You have to understand them um, as spirits are using yes. people. Spirits are doing <clears throat> things. The Most High is allowing this, and he only allows this with repent unrepentant hearts, right? These spirits can only do what they are allowed to do if you have an unrepentant heart. This is why the scripture tells us that Hashitan goes about seeking whom he yes, may, may devour, devour who yes. he has permission to devour, meaning somebody who don't have on the whole armor of Yah. Mm, mm, mm. Right? we right. got to put on that whole armor family so that we are able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm, mm, mm. Now, wow. When I think about the wiles of the devil, right, and that whole armor, I got to say this real quick. So if it's instructing us to put on the whole armor, it sounds like it's possible that some people are only partially suited up, that some people may have on some of the armor, but not yeah. all of it. But there's a strong directive there to put on the whole armor. Mm -hmm. So the Most High is telling us that if you don't have on the whole armor, you won't be able to stand. So that directive tells us to put on the whole armor yes. because if you are not guarded in your heart, if you are not guarded in yes. your mind, yes. if your feet aren't prepared with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that's right. If you don't have that sword, Benjamin, that's right. 
If you don't have that breastplate of righteousness, Shem, mm -hmm. if you don't have on the whole armor, the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. That's right. So he's looking at your suit of armor. He's looking he's at trying it. to see how he can get in. Let me look at them feet. Mm -hmm. See if he girded up right. Let me see if I can get in through that heart. Yeah. Let me see if I can get in through the mind. See if I can get in through the eye. You know what's amazing? Wow. I mean, we used to have that property out in Katawa. We used to go out there and um, mm -hmm. just go out in the grass and do stuff. I, 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 it got to the point where I said, man, you got to cover yourself up. Mm -hmm. I would make sure my pants was tucked in my socks and, and just the whole deal, put the stuff tied up and everything because them ticks and spiders and all yeah. kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. we'd going up in the brush and you... It, it, it would be ridiculous. It'd be so crazy, you know. Yes. yes. You know, and so I've I've learned that you know you get a tick on you, won't even know you only on you. He'll grow up on you. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be a little bit expecting that after he get through some, to be feasting Drinking on no you. Blood. Yeah, after he get through, he'd be, be be all big and everything. He'll grow up on you. You understand me? So understand what we're saying. It's just mm -hmm. like that. You got to make sure you cover it up. Yes. Completely. Yes. Because. That enemy is looking for any way to get to you, any way possible to get to you. Yeah, one of our moderators said, even them ears. I mean, the whole armor, y'all. Yeah. Now, y'all know that helmet of salvation, the helmets they had back then covered them ears too, the head, yeah. all of that, right? So we got to put on the yes. whole armor of the Most High that we may be able to stand, the whole armor. Yes. So we need to check our garments, right? Yes. And make sure that every entry point that the, the devil can possibly gain or use yes is protected yes mm, mm, mm. the last part here verse 34 to the end <clears throat> okay and your cove rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him but he refused to be comforted and he said for I will go down into Sheol unto my son mourning thus his father wept for him and the Midianim sold him Midianite sold him into Mitzrayim Egypt unto Potiphar mm -hmm. an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard Mm, so he was sold into slavery. And that's something, that spirit of betrayal is dangerous, y'all. I'm telling you right mm. now, it's dangerous. I got two more I want to read real quickly here. This is Judges. I can read the one in Judges, and I'll let you go to the other two. Mm -hmm. But the one in Judges, this is what it says. <clears throat> Judges chapter 16. And this is verse 4 through 21. This is what it says, Okay. Now, this is dealing with Samson and Delilah, okay? And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and we see wherein his great strength lies. By what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us a hundred pieces of silver. What's with this selling though <laughs> betraying people for silver? Don't it sound familiar again, mm -hmm. y'all? Mm -hmm. Right? For silver, right? So this was a woman that, that Samson loved, right? He was with this woman, right? And yet here she is conspiring. Mm -hmm. To betray him. For some silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. So here she is. She's she trying to get the information out of him, right? And wherein thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If thou bind me with seven green whips that were never dried, then shall I be weak as another man. Then the Lord to the Philistines brought up to her seven green whips which had not been dried and she bound him with them and now they were men lying in wait so she had the men lying in wait ready to get him right so he said as soon as I get this information I'm going to call the men to get him right and abiding with her in the chamber 
So they were abiding in her in her chamber, waiting to get him, right? And he said unto him, and she said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee. And Samson break the whiffs. So in other words, he was lying to her. My strength is in these little green things. He put them on like this, like he was bound. And she said, Philistines on you. So he yanked them off like this. And she said, oh, he was lying to me, right? <laughs> okay. And so now when the men were lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, she said to, the, she said to him, the Philistines be upon thee. And Samson, and Sam, upon thee, Samson. And he break the whips, and as a thread of tow is broken when it is touched, when it touches the fire. And so his strength was not known. So they didn't know his strength from that, right? Then it goes on and says, And the lion said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherein thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou, if they bind me fast with new ropes, so he told her another lie, right? Bind me fast with new ropes, then I, then, then I will be helpless, you know, right? And so to make a long story short, I'm going to go a little further down. That didn't work either, right? So <clears throat> she said unto him, Delilah said unto Samson, verse 13, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. So she probably whining. You hear this? Mm-hmm. Trying to get close to him so he could put his guards down. Tell me wherein thou mightest be bound. And he said to her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with web, and she fastened it with the pen, and said to him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he waketh out of sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and with the web. And she said to him, how canst thou say I love thee? So see what she's using? She's, she's using her relationship with him to deceive him so, so to, to deceive him so mm -hmm. she can betray him. Mm -hmm. She said, how can you tell me you love me? You told me all these lies. He said, I want to know where your strength is. You won't tell me, right? Mm -hmm. So Samson gave into that, right? And you know the story. I don't have to read anymore. You know the story. What happened? He gave into it and told her where his strength was. She cut off his hair, his locks, and then the Philistines came in, and the first thing they did, they bound him, and they put out his eyes. Mm -hmm. Wow. She stabbed him, but here he was, thinking, I love her. Yeah, I do love you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you where my strength is. And, mm -hmm. Now, someone referred to that as the spirit of Jezebel. Actually, that's the spirit of Delilah. Yeah. Uh, the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Jezebel. Yes. Um, there's a, lo a lot of, um, you know, confusion about the spirit of right. Jezebel. When you want to know the spirit of Jezebel, look at her attributes. Right. Well, it says Jezebel never betrayed Ahab. <laughs> right. She was right there with Ahab, right. helping Ahab. She mm -hmm. would have never done this to Ahab. Right. See the difference? Yeah. Right. Right. So, well, you know, we, we speak about the spirit of Jezebel because a lot of people misapply it. They misapply the spirit of Jezebel right. uh, many times. Um, the spirit of Delilah is just that, the spirit of Delilah. Delilah. Yes. The spirit of Jezebel is just that. And, and I spoke about that recently um, right. where uh, Jezebel was actually a woman who was, um, as a matter of fact, I think it was yesterday, um, I did a broadcast yeah. we were talking about how a lot of men today would actually love Jezebel because they say, ooh, she stick up for her husband. She's right? a foreign, <laughs> foreigner too? She's a foreign woman. And, <laughs> and uh, she got her husband whatever his, his heart to desire was, right? Yeah. And so uh, we, we need people to really understand that the spirit of Jezebel is quite different than what yeah. a lot of people have put out there. So. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, spirit of Delilah, spirit of Delilah. Right. Like right, Jezebel, like I said before, Jezebel would have never did this to Ahab. No. <laughs> she was always trying to figure out how can I get what that person have so my husband can have it. I mean, yeah. she was she She's was, going to the point of getting people killed and right. lying and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So just to please her husband, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go to Psalms now, chapter 55, verse 12. Okay, Psalms chapter 55, verse 12 reads as follows. It says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, mm. then I could have borne it. Neither was it him that hated me. Okay. That did magnify himself against me. Uh. Then I would have hid myself from him. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. 
You said there was someone close to him. Somebody close. Somebody close to him. Somebody he sat and ate with. It says, right? but it was you, a man, my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. It said, we took sweet counsel together. <laughs> we walked into the house of Elohim in company together. Wow. Oh. They went to church together, y'all. <laughs> mm. They mm. went to mm. church together, right? Assembly. They went to assembly together. Yeah, we were carrying our scripts, you know, going to. He said, it was him. That did this wickedness to me. Wow. Yeah, so he 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 made he wanted to make it clear. He said if it was an enemy who did this, somebody that I didn't know that rose up against me to yeah. do this stuff. Now that I can understand. That's a person that's an enemy. Yeah. An enemy, you expect that from them, right? But not you. Not you. Not you. Not you. You're somebody who's supposed to love me, somebody that fellowship with me, right? Yes. Somebody who is my kin, my friend, my neighbor. My co-worker, whatever it is, right? Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Like Brother Gary River says, those of your own household. Yep. And the, the scripture spirit says of that. betrayal. Yeah. The spirit of betrayal. Scripture says that. It's good. The enemy will be of your own household. So that's why we have to be careful of our own household. We got to be careful that you don't let no bad spirits get a hold of you and cause you to do nothing wicked mm-hmm. against your brother and against your brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Okay? In these last days... Parents, you gotta be you, you you gotta deal with your household in the spirit of, of 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 righteousness and everything, and so that your household and and the, and the children of that household, y'all got to walk in righteousness. You can't let your heart be taken by no wickedness, right? You gotta stay clean in your mind and your thoughts. Okay? All throughout Scripture, we see examples of people allowing spirits to take hold yeah and once that t- spirit takes hold and cause them to do something don't that spirit redirect it says no, okay it- now that um i'm done using you to do this that and the third i'm coming for you now i mean ain't that how the spirits <laughs> work <laughs> yeah they do they come this right back how- they get, get the person to do something wicked and next thing you know then the spirit like okay now that you done did this deed now it's your turn Mm, mm, mm. That's always how it goes down. It's your turn now. Like one sister said in her song, she said, I won't keep secrets with the devil. Right? So y- y'all got to keep that in mind that these spirits ain't your friend just because you working with them and they doing something. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Cain hated his brother, so he let that spirit of murder rise up in him, the mm-hmm. spirit of jealousy. Right? And then he went begging to you. Who He said, don't, don't let people who find me in the earth kill me. Because he knew. He knew that what he did was so wicked that something was going to come for him. Mm-hmm. So the Most High had to say, okay, I'll, I'll protect you. But you're going to be a vagabond in the earth. Mm-hmm. Your life is going to be like this in the earth. In other mm-hmm. words, he said, you still getting judged. You're going to still be judged. It's going to be a right? hard life, too. You in the ground ain't going to yield you no fruit. You're going to have a hard life. Right. Don't, so don't think you're getting right. off easy. Right? Mm-hmm. Don't think you're getting off easy. So... Uh, be very careful and weary of these spirits, family. If you see anything or feel anything rising up in you, if you have any tinge of a thought against a person, ask from whence did it come and deal with it. Yeah. Okay? You got to be careful. And, and you brothers out there, you got to be careful of the spirit that may rise up against you against your own wife. Mm-hmm. That's why Paul said, he said, be not bitter against her. Isn't that something that he would say that? He said, but show her love. Mm -hmm. Don't be bitter against her. Right? Exactly. Wow. I'm telling you, it's all in the scriptures. We got to be careful in these last days because these spirits are looking for something that they can use. Something. Somebody. Somebody, yep. This is 2 Samuel (laughs) chapter 3. And I'm going to start reading. Is it 2 Samuel? 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 22 through 34. And I can let you start reading that. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter 3, uh, verses 22 through 34 reads as follows. It says, And behold, the servants of David and Yaov Joab, uh huh, came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David and Chevron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. Now, let, let me explain to you what's going on here, right? So, What's actually going on here, I, I probably should have put earlier scriptures in it. But what's going on here was that um, uh, Joab was warring 
against. I just clicked on the wrong thing. Let me close this down. Okay. And what happened was Joab had become the enemy of David at the time. And so, not Joab, Abner. And so Abner wanted to make things right between him and David. So he did. He goes and he made things right with David. And he came to David and he spoke with David. And David told him, you can go in peace, Abner. Because David worked with Abner, right? Mm -hmm. David, remember Abner, he kind of branched off with Saul when, they, when Saul was hunting David, right? So Abner... So Abner was. He said, "I gotta go make this thing right with David and everything." At this time, I think I think um, Saul had been killed by then. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on it, but I think that he was dead by then, right? And so Abner went and made things right with David, but but uh, Joab wanted Abner dead. Okay, you understand the story now. Joab wanted Abner dead. So even though David went and made things right, not David, Abner would made things right with David. When Abner left, Abner left under peace. It was peace now between him, him and David and David's war men. It's supposed to be peace, right? So mm -hmm. when Abner left, this is where we left leave off right here at this party. So Joab shows up. And when Joab showed up with David, Joab was like, oh, okay, what's going on here, right? So he's trying to find out what's going on. Verse 23, it says, when Joab and all the hosts that was with him were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, came to David, and he, the king, have sent him away, and he is gone in peace. So Joab was like, well, wait a minute. He sent him away in peace? <laughs> so Joab was like angry, and Joab was like, oh, man, I can't believe he sent him away in peace, right? So you can finish from there. Start reading that verse. 24? Yeah, 24. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? What have you done? Behold, Abner came unto you. Why is it that you have sent him away and he is quite gone? So he's looking at David like, David, you should have killed him. You're going to send him away, Abner? Wait a minute. Watch this. Why would David kill Abner when Abner and David used to fight together? They used to fight great battles together. Abner was one of David's men, right? They work together uh, uh, fighting battles against the Philistines. So, so why would David, David, like, I'm not going to kill Abner. Abner, a blessed man, right? Keep reading. You know, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you and to know you're going out and you're coming in and to know all that you do. So wait a minute. So now Abner, I'm not Abner, Joab is trying to convince David that Abner only came to spy you out. Mm. And now he's going to go and tell everybody this and that so they can come and try to slay you, man. But that wasn't the case. Abner was gone in peace and Abner's heart was right toward David, right? Keep reading. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sirah. But David knew it not. So David didn't know what was going on. And when Abner was returned to Chevron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib. And he died for the blood of Asiel, his brother. Okay. And after when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before Yahuwah forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab. Mm. And on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that has an issue, mm. or that is a leper, mm -hmm. or that leans on the staff, uh -huh. or that falls on the sword, oh, or that lacks bread. bread. Mm, mm, mm. So Joab, that was a curse spoken. That was on a him. curse. David spoke a curse on him. That's right. So Joab and Avisha, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother Ashiel at Givon in the battle. It was in a battle. See, Abner, he slew one of their brothers. And they were in a battle at the time. They're not at war now. And so they, Abner made peace. Now that they made peace, there shouldn't have been no slaying. And so they was like, man, y'all were at war though at the time that happened. Mm -hmm. You can't now go after them and we'd have made peace. Right. Israel's coming back together again, right? 
And so Abner, the, so so Dave was like, you know what? I washed my hands of what you just did, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't want no part of it. Keep going. And he he went, went on to speak that curse. He says, yep. this is what's going to happen to your household. Yep. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. Because you, you went against the grain, right? Yeah. And David said to Yoav and to all the people that were with him, rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the coffin. And they buried Abner in Chevron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Did Abner die as a fool dies? Mm. Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into feather fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so shall you. And all the people. So fell as thou. And so fell as thou. And so fell you. Mm-hmm. And all the people wept again over him. Mm, mm, mm. This this re- this story here is really sad because he had to get close to him again. Mm-hmm. And Abner Abner felt like I ain't got to pull up my my guards for nothing. Abner was a man of war. If Abner had a known Joab was coming to kill him, mm-hmm. trust me, Joab wouldn't have been able to kill Abner that easy. Abner was a man of war. Mm-hmm. But Abner had lowered his guards. He said, hold on, I'm going to speak to you. I had them bring you back, man, because I'm going to speak to you for a minute. Can, I, can we speak for a minute? Mm-hmm. So he got all close to him like this. When he got close to him, leaned in to talk to him, he stabbed him in his ribs. Mm-hmm. David said, man, Abner, you got killed like a fool. Oh man, this is horrible. You when you think of, you let your guard down like a fool, you a man of war, and you let your guard down like a fool. Wow. But again, he had to get close to him. Just like Judas had to get close to the Messiah to kiss him on his cheek. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, mm. He had to get close to him, right? Mm-hmm. He had to get close to him. So, in this whole story, I want you to understand. The mindset of a Judas goat or a Judas steer, a mm. person who will lead astray a flock, a person who will betray the assembly, a person who will betray you, mm. right? Mm. This person that will betray you will get close to you. This is why you got to be careful, Israel. You got to be careful because they will get close to you, you know, and they will get you, you know? I remember um, this was a old a movie we saw. I saw it some time ago. John Wick. <laughs> it's kind of funny, kind of funny in the movie when um, uh, what was his name? Uh, Morpheus. What was his name in the movie? Yeah, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he talked about how John Wick came up behind him and stabbed him one time, but he left him, but he left left him for life, to be alive. And I remember Lawrence Fishburne said, he said, no one comes up behind me like that again. Wow. He said, nobody get close to me like that again. Wow. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, amazing. I'm looking at this uh, comment brother uh, Shimmy Yahoo um, puts in. Uh-huh. Um, he says that he would speak from a distance with a so- where a sword can't reach and an arrow won't hit. Yeah. Meaning... You gonna stay right over there. Uh-huh. We're gonna get that close. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you that close. You yeah. Know? We're gonna speak from a distance. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if you remember Joab is the one um Abner is the one that pulled the bow back full force like this here. Like ah, and killed the person, Joab's mm. brother. Wow. <laughs> so it's, that's why I say this this is um this story is a trip because it you is. gotta understand a, a person with the mindset of betrayal. That's a dirty person. That's a person who set back to let envy get in him, and he gonna pay for it. Yeah. It's gonna come back and get him, right? Right. See, folk don't and consider then, that and part. Then, and they don't consider the fact that you gotta live with that wickedness you did. So you gotta sit back every day and look in the mirror at yourself, and every day you gonna tell a lie. Well, I think that brother deserved it though. I think she deserved it though. I think this person deserved it though. Look at all of the murders that's going on in this world today. It's crazy. Huh? It is crazy. And you also have to look over your shoulder for judgment, though. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Folks forget that they got they to look over their shoulder now because the Most High is righteous. Yes. Because the Most High is righteous, that's what you got to do. Uh, Set Apart says, beware of who you get close to or let 
in your family space. That, yeah. the, see, that's the issue. It's, re- it's really sad that we have to think like that. Yeah. We sit back and we look at these other nations. They come together and it just seemed like all is well, right? Yeah. They functioning together, doing things together, fellowship and community together. But when it comes to our people, it just seemed like it's a big question mark. Should I? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to, but should I? Yeah. Ain't that something? You know something? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. this, this real quickly here, y'all. I remember one time I was betrayed a long time. This was a long time ago. So I remember I was betrayed by this brother, right? And he did something that was kind of really dirty, just low down dirty, right? Before he did it, I'm going to tell you what he did. He turned, looked back at me. He said, hey, brother. I said, when he was leaving, I looked at him. He looked at me. He looked at me and he did this here. He said, hey, brother. Turn around. He said, just want you to know I love you, brother. Mm-hmm. Then he turned and walked away. I said, love you too, brother. Mm-hmm. Like that. Turned and walked away. And he went away to dis- to do a deceptive thing to try to stab me and my family in the back. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you hear me? But what's amazing is I saw the look in the eye when they said they love you. It, it was kind of like. Yeah, it was. It was like that. It and was. I, and I said, I wonder if my baby saw that. Yep, it was. You know. It was just like that. I love you, brother. And then it was like. Yep, I saw it too. And I, I walked, when he went away, I said, mm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a it's it's really a trip, family. Yeah, but, um, that spirit is alive and well. Yes, and working, but people don't understand that the Most High is righteous. Yes, when I say that the Most High is righteous, y'all know what I'm trying to say here. That the Most High, He sees everything. He sees it all because He sees everything, and you got folk praying. You activate judgment against yourself if you have unrighteous and unjust request and wickedness against people. Yeah. Why don't that our people get that? Why don't they understand that? Yes. That the Most High is not to be played with. We ain't just dealing with one another, right? Right. We're dealing with all kinds. Scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places right Right. and then your interactions with these spirits can bring about a reaction from the most high that's right you see so we need to understand that what we are doing one against each other Mm -hmm. it doesn't just stop with us don't stop with us yet it goes above and beyond that there are spiritual consequences to natural choices and decisions yeah you got to reap what you sow. That's right. Okay? That's a law. That's a law. That's a spiritual law. spiritual law. law. You can't get right. around it, right? You're going to reap what you sow. Mm-hmm. Okay? So just got to be careful to seed you sow. Family, I hope this lesson was a blessing to you. Mm-hmm. Okay? Again, okay, this was about the Judas goat and the Judas steer. Mm-hmm. You know? There's a Judas goat and there's a Judas steer. Don't let okay? it steer you. What is it? That's a right. Judas goat. That Judas go. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that Judas, Judas go. Just trying to steer the sheep up. to the slaughterhouse. That's right. He, they follow him right on up to the slaughterhouse. Now, but right when he gets to the, the slaughterhouse, there's a door that opens up, and See, he ducks out of that slaughterhouse area. And, and once he ducks place. out of it, the other sheep just keep on walking right on into the slaughterhouse. That's right, right? Courtney. That's right. That's Courtney. how you get Justice him to go. Will be served. That's, That's right. right. That's right. The steer. Is a neutered bull, mm-hmm. right? He has no power in him, no fight in him whatsoever. He do whatever the master tells him to do, That's even right. if it's wicked. Even if it's wicked. That's right. Well, family, I hope this bless you. I want you to be strong. I want you to continue to get in the word. Mm-hmm. We want to thank all our moderators. Thank all of you that uh, that um, support our ministry, and may the Most High continue to bless you and keep you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest Hallelujah. of your day. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom.